I'm very happy of being able to say that the previous iceberg was so well received from the community. There was just uh, one little slight problem about it. It was too short. So for today I made an iceberg that is more than twice the size of the previous one. And I mean, if you're familiar with my schedule, you know, <laughs> it wasn't easy. <laughs> Help me. But anyways, for those unfamiliar with the concept of the iceberg, we're gonna go from the stuff at the top of the iceberg, which is usually most known among the community, down to the bottom of the iceberg, where there are the deepest secrets of the dungeon of fear and hunger. So, remember to subscribe, leave a like, comment down below what you want to see in the next episode, and enjoy the most gigantic iceberg you will ever see! The funny thing is, unironically, this part is the most difficult for me to do. Because by interacting with the community a lot, I got very debated about a lot of the topics I want to talk about in this section, but uh, anyways, I'm gonna do my best. Terrorcher was a hero. If you read the Captain's Diary guaranteed in the Torture Chamber Room, you're gonna discover that Torture in the past was actually a great warrior for the Kingdom of Rondon. But unfortunately, one day he was captured and tortured for five years, across which he lost a lot of his body parts and his mind as well. He also had a title as a knight, he was called the Torture the White, but what we see now unfortunately is just the shadow of his former self. Someone that wants to demolish every single person that enters inside of the torture chamber. Find the secret laboratory. There is a secret laboratory in Mahabre where you can actually create your own husk in order to be able to perform the quest of the Temple of Torment without losing anyone. There are two hints about his existence. The first one is a line pronounced by Najra if you have him in your party. And the second one is by actually throwing stones instead of the big holes in Mahabra in the present. In fact, if you use it in specific points, the stone is gonna hit something fairly close by, which uh, addresses that there is something down there. And so you can go down in the laboratory and create your ask. Isaiah Weird Plague Attack. If you fight Isaiah at any point in his quest, he is gonna do, at the end of the second turn, a weird attack with his left arm. And if you fail the coin flip, he is gonna touch you with his arm that supposedly has the plague. We're gonna talk about this in the future. But long story short, this attack currently does... Nothing. Happy slash depressed. If you talk to Pocket Cat in the Cave Dweller Village and you ask him what is bothering him, then, dependently from your next answer, you're gonna receive either the happy status or the depressed status, which does. Uh, nothing. Except maybe clogging your vision on the status effects in the normal menu or something. Ruin changes your appearance. There is a very particular enemy in the infested part of the mines, which is the Miner Spectre. This particular enemy is able to use only one attack, which is called Ruin. Every time he uses Ruin, your character will permanently become older, and after this happens three times, you're gonna die. But it's always funny to look at the details and see all the different sprites created specifically for this attack right here. Human Hydra is a weird marriage. The room in which you find the Human Hydra is a room identical to those which contain ritual circles. You know, the zones where you can sacrifice or make love or pray. Wait, make love? You mean transforming into a marriage? Hmm... Let's try to ask the new gods about the Human Hydra, you know. Uh... Hmm... So yeah, it's pretty clear how they became a gigantic marriage by making love on the ritual circle together. Miasma event! For those that don't know, there is a reason for which you should be careful when you actually have the Miasma equipped to someone. Because if the character that has the Miasma equipped has less than 70 mind in Tavern Starvation difficulty, or less than 50 mind in Fear and Hunger difficulty when traversing three specific spots in the map, then if the one with the Miasma is the main character, then he's gonna kill all the party members in the group except Najra, the skeletons and the ghosts. Instead, if the one with the Miasma is just a party member, then he's gonna go crazy and dependently from your choices, you may actually end up fighting him. Or at least you should, because the fight is currently bugged in the last version of the game, and you are actually gonna have the screen turned black and nothing is gonna happen. So please remember, either memorize the spots, or just don't equip the miasma if you don't want to fight anything in that moment. Or just give it to Legard or to a skeleton. Knights of the Midnight Sun. Knights of the Midnight Sun is the name of the mercenary group created by Legard that supposedly became too dangerous in the 
eyes of the Kingdom of Rondon, and so, in the first occasion they had, they completely annihilated them, and captured Legard. The only survivors known of the Knights of the Midnight Sun are Legard and Darcy. Talk options. Talk is a skill that may seem useless, but actually gives you the chance to end the fight without losing any damage in a lot of fights, such as the ghosts by saying prepare to die, such as the dogs by throwing a stick using Talk, or even why not, talking to the Salmon Snake to give the Gnome Eggs, stopping the Lord of the Flies for one turn by talking, you know, the possibilities are infinite, you just have to explore them. Always try to make the most out of the stuff you have, especially in a game like Fear and Hunger. Mahavre. Mahavre is just one of the names for which the city of Mahavre is known of. Or it may just be a typo, you know, there are some typos in Fear and Hunger, so maybe... Uh, 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 Miro, yeah, yeah, tell me, huh? Mahabra and Mahabra aren't typos. Oh, sorry, sorry, no, 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 it's not a typo, guys, it's intended. Karomola watches you. If you sleep in the bed in the basement near the Iron Shakespeare, the one with a statue of a lady with a crow, then once you wake up, you will feel like if someone was watching you. And we know what happens if you try to sleep again and you fail the coin flip. The crow molar is gonna attack you. So, supposedly the crow molar was able to see you sleeping the first time. Necronomicon. If you find an ancient book in the dungeon and you start to read it, you are soon gonna be able to find out the real name of it. The Necronomicon. Then there is gonna be a coin flip in which you can't use a lucky coin, and if you get it correctly, you are gonna get one of the spells from the Gorgor of Spell Tree. Except a uh, pyromancy trick for some reason. Oh, and if you miss it, you die! Like, completely. You just die. Easy, right? Ghosts are otherworldly. This may seem pretty obvious to you, but after all, we are still on the first layer. But ghosts can only be damaged by cursed weapons that you can mainly obtain from the Hexen and from the Eastern Sword. Those are the only otherworldly weapons present in the dungeon. Or you can also just use some spells, except stuff such as Paramancy Trick or Combustion, because those are not otherworldly. Valtail quits show. If you fight Valtail and you select the option Talk against him, he's gonna ask you a lot of different questions. And if you answer correctly, he is gonna take uh, on average 500 damage on each body part currently existing. And if you fail, simply nothing happens. So there is basically almost no reason to not use this in the battle. Empty scroll. There are two places in the dungeon where you can see on some pedestals the books on which you can see the writings like Oh Lord, give or teach something. And if you keep the priest robe and you talk to the dark priests in the first level of the dungeon, they're gonna tell you how Olmir is able to give you almost everything using an empty scroll by writing Oh Lord, give or teach, dependently from if you want an item or a skill, and then the item or skill you want. You can select almost everything, and it's very good. Blue Sin. In the infested part of the mines, there is a sword literally stuck inside of some rocks. And if you try to take him, you will see the whole dungeon shaking, because uh, I guess that's one of the pillars that is currently holding the cave zone. And if you take it completely, the whole cave is gonna collapse. The only way, the intended way, to be able to take the blue scene without the whole cave collapsing on you and killing you, is to take it and then immediately opening the inventory and using the passages of Mahabre. In that way, the cave is gonna collapse while you are inside of Mahabre, and once you go back, you're gonna be perfectly fine. Eastern Sword is infested. Once you take the Eastern Sword from the thicket, there is gonna be a ghost appearing immediately that is gonna try to attack you. And this will happen in a lot of places across the whole dungeon until you have the Eastern Sword with you. And once you kill the ghost, the Eastern Sword is gonna be purified, going from doing 40% critical rate to 70% critical rate. Chambara writes poetry. I don't know if you know this, but Ron Chambara, the tormented one, one of the members of the fellowship that actually became a new god, actually wrote poetry. There is a book you can find in the dungeon called Poems of Love and Torment, where Chambara itself is writing a poem. And also, if you read it carefully, you can vaguely realize he's also talking in there about the torment, the chains. I mean, now we know how he took inspiration for that thing. And while the previous part was the most difficult to be made, this was actually the funniest. Because in my mind, a lot of options and different pieces of trivia are perfect for the second level of an iceberg. So without further ado, let's go! Seymour kills Torture. If you rat out Buckman and let Torture kill him, and then go back to Seymour saying that Buckman accidentally got killed by Torture, then Seymour is gonna go to the Torture Chamber and kill Torture immediately. 
And after doing that, before going insane, he's gonna attack you as well to take revenge for killing Buckman. Oh boy, Seymour sure was a loyal knight until the end. Cave Dweller Massacre. Every time you start the run, there is a 10% chance that once you reach the Cave Dweller Village, you will find all the Cave Dwellers already killed. This doesn't apply to the Cave Dweller that is actually attacking Darcy, so you can still recruit Darcy in that way. And all the dead Cave Dwellers are gonna be replaced by two Moonless Guards, which are arguably one of the most annoying enemy of the dungeon. Cave Dwellers mustn't interact. The society of the cave dwellers, for how primitive it is, is still somewhat neutral towards everyone that passes through there. They just want to not get involved with problems of the outsiders, and that's why there is one specific cave dweller which actually is gonna show interest towards us, and that's why another cave dweller is gonna rush there and kill it, because they mustn't interact with the outsiders. The only situation in which this is remotely acceptable is if you are trading stuff for money. Lord of Flies is Gordon Ramsay. Did the iceberg really need this entry? What, uh, what can I even say? This was born because a lot of people think that Lord of the Flies resembles Gordon Ramsay. And that's basically all that there is to, to say. Do you really want to watch this video until the end? Dagger and Doll. If you have the girl in your party and you try to take the dagger in the backyard, you're gonna have a special interaction in which the girl is kinda happy that you gave her the knife, and the same happens for the doll in the prisons. Oh, and also, this is gonna help during the final battle in ending A, because the final boss is gonna skip some turns due to these items. Unused Elite Guard Sprite. Going through the game files, you're able to find another sprite for the elite guard, specifically without an helmet part. Who knows, maybe in the past you were able to actually destroy the helmet before being able to attack the head, and then you were able to attack the head or something. Whatever the case, we will never know. Now that's just an unused sprite left for legacy. Dots are broken. For those that don't know what is a dot, dot means damage over time, so damage that is applied every turn or every few turns regardless. And this includes burning, poison, bleeding... All the possible dots applicable on enemies are broken, because enemies are actually gonna die when a percentage of their HP, usually the 50%, is destroyed. But dots deal damage on the whole percentage of HP. Let me explain. If an enemy has 10,000 HP, but dies when reaching 50% of HP, so 5,000 HP, then, if you take a dot, for example burning, which does 10% of maximum HP as damage every turn, you will only need 5 turns to kill it. Red Scarf. If you go through the old passage and you kill the old guardian, you are gonna be able to get from its corpse a red scarf, which offers 5 defense. Even though technically that's no protection, because in the game files you don't get any resistance from that, so that 5 defense is a lie. But you can show this scarf to the past version of the old guardian, and he will actually congratulate with you because certainly the battle with you was legendary. Valtail Puzzle. In order to complete in the intended way the Valtail puzzle in the Grand Library, you have to go into the present, and you will find three positions of the statues. How do we find the other two? Not considering that you can quickly try all the possible combinations pretty easily, you can find the other two statues in the rooms nearby, specifically one on the ground and one still standing. Abominable marriage, erectile dysfunction. <laughs> Okay, I I'm sorry, I had to include this, okay? It's an important piece of legacy. If you become an abominable marriage and you try to make love once again, either on the ritual circle or with the bunny masks, you are not gonna be able to because uh, your organs don't work. And let's go to the next one! Spectre Knight can be killed. Do you know the Spectre Knight, the creature you are not supposed to kill because you have to kill the physical version on him in order to access the Nosramus chamber? Well, turns out you can actually kill it. It has 10,000 HP, only takes damage from other world attacks, and uh, what is the reward for doing this? Nothing, because you still cannot enter in the Nosramus chamber. The Salmon Snake is a dragon. Despite its appearance resembling a lot the axolotl, the name of the Salmon Snake in Finnish is... Uh, ahem, sorry, uh, sorry, my pronunciation. Lohikarme! <laughs> if you guys are Finnish, can you tell me if I pronounce it correctly? But anyways, Lohikarme literally means dragon. So, there is a chance that this is just a dragon deformed by the dungeon, because after all, we see a real dragon in Mahabre. 
but uh, the difference is this one was influenced by the darkness technically, so it's still a possibility. Najra hates pheromones. If you try to use pheromones on Najra during the battle, then he is immediately gonna get angry at you and he tells you to not do that again. What he's trying to imply is that you cannot use pheromones on Najra. Doesn't matter if you think you can, no, you can't. Najra hates that and it doesn't work. Look at this gameplay of me using the pheromones multiple times and having the guard attack everyone else. Do you finally find accomplishment in your decisions? Grave of the player. While going through the basement, you may end up in the flip side basement, the domain of the Black Witch. And if you follow a specific road, you're gonna be able to arrive to a tombstone. And if you dig, you're gonna be able to find your own skeleton of the currently playable character you're using. But hey, at least this is gonna tell us the date of birth of all the characters, allowing us to calculate their canonical ages while they are going into the dungeon. Najra kills the husk. The whole reason Najra is following you and guiding you in Mahabre is because he wants to reach the secret laboratory to create his own husk in order to have a new body. But after creating his body, he's gonna find it imperfect and not able to handle him. So he's just gonna burn it after you interact with it, and then you're able to craft your own husk, interacting with the machine again. Enemy marriages. Apart from the human Hydra, there are other two instances of marriages that we fight in the dungeon. The first one being the yellow lizard mage, which is, as you may imagine, a marriage between a yellow mage and a lizard man. And then we have the moonless guard. Do I really need to tell you what is the Moonless Guard? Karud Sword cannot be cursed. You can get a Karud Sword by a random loot after killing a lizard man. And if you try to curse it using three lesser souls, the sword is gonna collapse from too much power inside of it. I don't really know if there is a lore reason for this, the only reason I can think of is, I don't know, a sort of weird balance, because uh, the Karut Zord is still a somewhat powerful weapon, but then again, we almost have access from the start to the Easter Sword, so... weird. Najra enemy is unkillable. You remember when I said that the Ghost Knight can actually be killed? Well, the same doesn't apply to Najra, because on contrary to the Spectre Knight, Najra cannot be killed. He literally has a resistance to the state used to kill enemies, which is knockout. Oh, and the same applies for Darkness, of course, because I mean, imagine killing Darkness during the battle! Who do you think you are, an old god or something? Yegai Getsu. Yegai Getsu is an old deity, not clear if deity means a new god, or just another type of god like, I don't know, the god of ultraviolence technically, and in particular is a warrior deity, which warriors are gonna search during periods of tranquility in order to find a purpose in their lives. But unfortunately, considering we find the charm of Yegaigetsu on a corpse in the dungeon, I guess uh, Yegaigetsu died? All mere necromancy. Oh. <sighs> So, um, do you remember necromancy, the skill that you can use to resurrect ghosts and skeletons to make them fight by your side? Well, it can be used on Oldmere too, in the Tomb of the Gods. And I know you may say, wait, that's fantastic, we can recruit Oldmere in our party? No. If you try to use necromancy on uh, his corpse, uh, he... Listen, do you see that black bar? The black bar is gonna become a little bit bigger. You know what I mean? Okay, I think playtime is over. The people that already wanted to close the video already closed it. So now it's only me and you guys. Are you ready to embark on these deeper parts of the dungeon? Different priest factions. Enki, despite being one of the most notorious priests, gets attacked by priests. The only way for you to not get attacked is to equip their priest robe, addressing the fact that there are different factions of priests, or that maybe they just dislike Enki, I guess? But I still wanted to include this. Mahabre was the lizard city. If you ask new gods about the lizard man, they're gonna tell you that lizard men inhabited the dungeons much, much before humans. As you may also recognize by the fact that there are literal gigantic statues of lizard men in the prisons. And also by the presence of lizard ish creatures instead of the void, such as the literal greater blight or the pterodactyls, which literally represent lizard men ascending. Items that do nothing. There are several items in the dungeon that you can collect that are useless. 
And I don't mean useless like the red scarf, because that still gives you a dialogue with the old guardian. I mean that don't have any function, literally. These are diamond, stealable in a lot of situations, skeletal leg, bone saw on the leg of a skeleton, dirt, literally everywhere, gnome milk, which is, I think, supposed to be an alternative to the yellow vial, but unfortunately doesn't have a use, ancient one soul, soulstone on the girl, even if this last one technically is lore, so... I don't know if I should be too harsh to it. And the same technically may be applied even to the cave wolf fur. Unused white angel sprite. In the game files there is another sprite of the white angel, much less white? It's more grey actually. And it's actually called the ground angler. I don't know what really Mirror wanted to do with this, maybe it was supposed to be an alternative present version of the white angel, maybe? Eastern perfume. We went over items that do nothing. But this is a different level, because it's supposed to do something. We know in the code there is actually some sort of taunt mechanic, which is basically what Pheromones does, but unfortunately, for how RPG Maker is programmed, that doesn't work. So literally, the Eastern Perfume, which was supposed to make you get attacked on the party member equipped with it, does nothing. God of Depths Layout We may say that the whole dungeon of Fear and Hunger is an extension of the body of the God of the Depths. There are multiple organs of the God of the Depths scattered across the dungeon, and all of this combines with a phrase of Ragnavaldor where he mentions how God of the Depths is able to change the layout of the dungeon to make us understand why every time you start a run there is a chance for some layouts to be different. That's the God of the Depths, making the dungeon different for each visitor. The Plague do you remember when I mentioned in Isaiah coin flip attack there was a weird plague? Well, the plague is actually present instead of Rondon. If you go in there in the present section in Mahabre, you're gonna be able to see a lot of people killed by this plague. There is also a plague doctor nearby. So Isaiah may just be a victim of the plague that wanted to enter instead of the dungeon of fear and hunger for some reason related to it, maybe. Maybe he wanted to get some money to be able to find a way to heal the plague or at least contribute to the research. There are two different names. Terrature is one of the most miscalled characters in the entire game. Because while his name is Terrature, Captain Rudimer calls him Terrorur Then if you use marksmanship on him, you're gonna be able to read Terror 4, or if you just throw an arrow without marksmanship, Terror 4. And to finish this in the game files, he is actually called Terrorful. Is this just a misspelling a name? Or is this the deepest lore of the dungeon? Harvestman Design The Harvestman Design was born for a very particular reason. In fact, it was born because Orange was trying to make an image for one of his friends' EP. And to do it, he took inspiration both from a Nirvana album and a Kurt Cobain album. And the Harvestman we ended up with was very similar to the Kurt Cobain album cover. While there is another work of Orange used for his friend's EP, which is more similar to the Nirvana one apparently, which is this one. I'm gonna censor it a little bit just to be sure. Jack Joe Inspiration. Do you remember the Jack Joe, the creature that was almost a terrific experience for the majority of the players that stayed in the entrance of the dungeon of fear and hunger for a lot of time? Well, turns out uh, he is based on a true animal called the Irish Wolfhound. False Cube of the Depths. If you get the Cube of the Depths using an empty scroll, what you get is not the real Cube of the Depths, it's a different version used early on in previous versions of the game, which actually is a pocket Cube of the Depths, because you don't need to go to a time machine to use it. It doesn't allow you to enter Mahabre, but it can be used whenever you are, whenever you want. Even though it's just a bug, so in a lot of places you are actually gonna permanently stuck yourself if you use it. Brain Flower the reason for which a lot of people in the dungeon are going crazy is because of the darkness, the fact that the darkness is spreading in the dungeon. And this darkness affects also plants, creating something like the brain flowers, which are basically parasites that are able to possess a living being and control them. Which is why if you equip a guard outfit against an infected guard, the guard is still gonna attack you, regardless of your outfit. Hall of the Gods we went through the Hall of the Gods multiple times in our runs, probably. But what is the Hall of the Gods? It's a place where new gods go after they stop having influence on the world. The less people believe in a new god, the less power the new god has, until you reach the point of no return when you finally go into the Hall of the Gods forever. I mean, not technically forever, because technically you can still be summoned into the real world, but this is not a part of the Fear and Hunger 1 iceberg. Darcy is lesbian. 
There is a theory based on an old concept art of Darcy where she was surrounded by females in particular poses, we may say, which says that Darcy is lesbian. But there are no confirmations of this. The only remotely considerable confirmation is the fact that in Dungeon Knights, if you fail the date with Darcy, then she's gonna say how she maybe is really into girls, but how Legard was able to make her change her mind. I personally, in the current version of the game, with the current informations, I don't believe Darcy is lesbian. Old Mir representation of Jesus. There are a lot of similarities between Old Mir and Jesus Christ. Both were born of a virgin mother, they both gathered 12 apostles to disseminate the message of God. They both were crucified, they died for humanity's transgressions, they rose from the dead, and they also instructed their disciples to continue spreading their teachings. Nameless and Old Guardian Halls. In some unused version of the Nameless and the Old Guardian sprites, they actually have some cube-shaped holes on their bodies. Who knows, maybe in the past you were able to trigger them by putting inside of them the Cube of the Depths? Maybe the whole boss fight with them was only triggerable after you put the Cube of the Depths in them and not after getting the souls of the gods. Chef Anders Chef Anders is the author of the book called Recipes of the 15th Century. And why are we talking about him? Because he actually worked inside of the dungeon. If you go into the basement, there are several tombstones, and one of them, you can't imagine it, there is exactly Chef Anders. Names of the Ghouls While there are no direct confirmations of the original names of the skeletons, if you go into the game files, you're able to find a resemblance of the real names of the Ghouls. In fact, they are called Jan, Hubert and Geringo. What can I say? Welcome to the final layer of our iceberg of today. Hope you have fun. Lord of Flies door. In the game files there is a special picture of a Lord of the Flies shaped like a door. We have no idea about what was intended to happen with this creature, maybe it was like a surprise attack after you kill a door or something, but unfortunately it was never implemented, even though the idea would be very cool, especially to give a sort of drawback to be able to actually unga boonga all the doors of the dungeon. Virgin Mage and Penance Knight the developer was originally thinking about adding two more classes after the release of Fear and Hunger, Virgin Mage and Penance Knight, but unfortunately the idea was scrapped because the others became too iconic. We do have some old design images of them though. This was supposed to be the Virgin Mage, and then in this image right here we can see the Virgin Mage again with what is supposedly the Penance Knight, even though it's not really confirmed. But at least the Penance Knight entered into the game through the Penance Armor. Lord of Flies Old Sprite. The Lord of the Flies has an unused sprite in the game files with some big horns, which is much more demonic than the current one. And you know what's the funny thing? This sprite is very similar to a sprite in Termina of a character related to a character that is very similar to Gordon Ramsay. And do you remember what I said before about the Lord of the Flies being very similar to Gordon Ramsay? Legard Head. During the final battle of ending C against Legard, don't ever try to attack the head, because the head has more than 100% evasion, so the only instances in which you can attack it is if you use for example a murky vial, but it's not worth it as it has like 3000 HP. Traveling Merchant in Rondon in an unused map of the Rondon city, there is actually the Traveling Merchant as a sprite placed on it. I don't know if this was just a testing zone for the developer, and maybe it is just a leftover from it, but maybe, originally, you were intended to reunite with the Traveling Merchant in the dream after you get scammed, and maybe get a revenge by killing him? Non-implemented items. There are some items in the game files not present inside of the game, such as the flashlight, which literally has also an event that is supposed to create light, but of course it wasn't finished. Then there is also the branding iron, which, based on the description, marks those with black plague, which is related to the plague, maybe this was supposed to be a punishment after you get the plague from Isaiah, but then it was never implemented? Arm of the Nameless, which in the description says, given to us by the Nameless. Maybe before having the red scarf as a prize, there was the Arm of the Nameless? Then there is Lockpick, which was maybe basically a precursor to the lockpicking skill, maybe you needed these to force doors. And then the Cloth Cape. 
I genuinely have no idea about the usage of these in the game, possibly. Maybe a mini armor for the girl? God of the Depths devours. There is an unused mechanic of the God of the Depths, which is actually still present in the game out of bounds, in which you are able to make the God of the Depths eat your party members in order to increase the affinity. But unfortunately, it doesn't work properly, so you're gonna lose the party member but will not gain affinity. Horse fight. There are two different sprites of a brown horse in the game files with a demonic-ish face, which is very similar to the horse you can find in the entrance of the dungeon. Maybe in the past, this was supposed to be, I don't know, a final fight before leaving the dungeon after killing everything? Unused Darcy meetup event. There is a cut content event in the game files, in which once entering inside of the courtyard, Darcy was gonna see you, but she was just gonna say she was in a hurry, and she was gonna leave you, being very carefully to go all the way around you, carefully looking at you to be sure you weren't doing anything bizarre. Maybe she was in a hurry because uh, she was searching a way to go down quickly to Legard. And then there is also another unused meetup event, which is our next iceberg point, unused Kahara meetup event. In fact, in the mines part of the dungeon, you are able to find a Kahara sitting here contemplating the existence. And this seems a very depressed Kahara, very similar to the Kahara you find in the void. After talking a little bit with him and after visiting Mahabre, you are gonna be able to talk to him about crushing old gods and only after that he's gonna join you calling himself Kahara of the Desert. Set D. In the past, when Orange was still releasing early updates for Fear and Hunger 1, he implemented new layouts for the maps, and also implemented the possibility of quickly seeing them, calling your character Set D. This means, in the past, you were able to call your character Set D in order to have some precise layout of the dungeon, not random anymore, some of them at least. But uh, why are we talking about it? Because it's still present. Which means you can still benefit from this if you call your character Set D. Demo Mahabre. In the past, there was no Mahabre, at least in the demo version of the game. The only way to access Mahabre was through a book positioned on a pedestal in the level 7 basement, which is actually at the passages of Mahabre book, which was gonna teleport you in Mahabre, and specifically the only zone accessible was the Temple of Torment, in which you were able to fight Chamba itself. Selene Theory. Some of you probably don't even know who is Celine. Celine, as you may figure out from some tortured notes, is a high priestess responsible for putting Legard down into the level 7 basement and not on the torture room anymore. There are some theories about who Celine may be. The one I like the most is the one that says that Celine is actually Nilvan in disguise, trying to help Legard going down to the level 7 basement nearer to Mahabre. Captain's Diary 4. While not being called Captain's Diary 4, there is another Captain Diary not findable in the dungeon, which says something about the Tree of the Depths being an entity able to control the mind of people and influence them, which is why the tree is completely cut off from the rest of the dungeon with multiple debris to prevent the access to it, because Rudimer was scared of it. God of the Depths design. The God of the Depths design is very similar to the one of the underwater shipwreck of the USS Saratoga. Specifically the hose hole at the bow of the destroyed ship. All the titles of new gods. If you go into the demo version of the game and read the Fellowship Chapter 1, the old gods are gonna have peculiar names to say the least. They are not just called the Dominating One, the Enlightened One, no 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 no. Francois is called the Eyes for the Blind, Nilvan is called the Mother for the Pure, and Valtail is called the Scholar of Arts while Chambra is still called the Tormented One. But what is funny is, in an old Art of Miro, there is actually a girl that is presumably Nilvan, holding a child, so maybe that's a resemblance of the Mother of the Pure, Jeanne created from Fern. Jeanne, the character that is part of the Army of Buckman, was based on a roleplay character created in the Fear and Hunger Discord by a user called Fern. There are still some old arts of some faux designs of Jeanne from Fern, such as this one that I'm showing you right now. Bushido Blade. Bushido Blade is an old 3D fighting game, and why are we talking about it? Because originally, Miro wanted to create a game in a Bushido Blade style, having characters in it such as Darcy and the Old Knight. I would be really curious about having a fighting game with the characters of the Dungeon of Fear and Hunger, also knowing it was a discarded project, so guys, modders on the way, if you want to create a game like this, I support you. And how can we end this iceberg of fear and hunger if not with the god of fear and hunger? In fact, now we are gonna talk about the old girl transformation animation into god of fear and hunger. Ah, <sighs> 
you have no idea how long actually it took to take all the informations needed, create the layers, record it, record the audio, edit the whole thing, like, you have no... I, I think I worked on this video for like three weeks at this point, so please guys, if you liked it, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe, comment what you want to see in the future, and also, if this iceberg was long enough... But for the time being, I was for Apollo 94, and I will see you next time.